if you have concussion or post-concussion syndrome, I'm gonna go through exactly the foods you need to eat, the foods you need to stay away from, and more importantly, exactly how you can generate more healing and get better now. I'm Dr. Matthew Boza, and I'm a corrective care chiropractor in Milton, Ontario, Canada. I help people heal and get over their spine-related health concerns so they can live the life they were designed to live. So don't forget to like, subscribe to my page, and share this information with the people we know need it the most. I'm gonna make this super simple for you because I know a lot of you that are gonna be watching this video are struggling. It's really hard to get over concussion and or post-concussion syndrome. So what are the foods that you need to eat? And maybe what's the best type of diet that you should have? So we're gonna break it down into different categories. The first thing that you need to maybe prioritize a little bit more is gonna be your protein. So you're gonna be looking at what are the best sources of protein and it's gonna be animal meat. And so you're looking at red meat, you're looking at chicken, you're looking at things like pork, fish, and especially when we say fish, I'm talking about wild caught fish. We wanna stay away from the farmed fish because they usually tend to have antibiotics and they're either on some type of medication or it's in the feed. And just the fact that they are in a close knit community, then there's a lot more diseases and things like that. So really what we're trying to stay away from is that kind of fish. We want the real stuff. When it comes to fish, please keep in mind, the larger the fish, the more chances that they're gonna be a bioaccumulation. They're gonna have things that they ate from other fishes or around in the ocean, and they're gonna accumulate that in their body. So the smaller the fish, they tend to be a little bit better. The next category of foods that you definitely wanna be eating is something called stone fruits or fruits in general and berries. So when we look at stone fruits, what's a stone fruit? A stone fruit is anything that has a pit, so it has that inside. So we're looking at nectarines, we're looking at things like cherries, plums, peaches, apricots. And then the other things that we want to be eating a lot more of is going to be berries. And why berries are excellent is because they do not spike insulin, but also they have a ton of nutrition there. So these are excellent for your body. When it comes to any type of fruits, you want to make sure that they are organic because just spraying the pesticides on them, those are things that even though you wash your fruit, it is something that you are gonna consume. And again, our job here is to get you over this. So how are we gonna get you over this is by making sure that there's less chemicals going in and there's less chances of interchemical reactions, but also inflammation. We want to stop inflammation. Vegetables, absolutely, you gotta eat your vegetables. Now vegetables are one of the best sources for again, more nutrition, but they're usually also a little bit safer to eat as well. So how you cook them, whether you're sauteing them, you're steaming them, juiced, roasted. I mean, at the end of the day, how you, pre how you prepare those is up to you and do go by your liking. Again, we're gonna try and stick to organic. We want it as close to its original structure and as close to being pesticide free as possible. When it comes to cooking, how you're making and preparing your food, you want to go for the oils that are the best for you. So you're looking at coconut oil, avocado oil, and things like olive oil. However, it's important to realize that if you're using uh, oils to cook your food, you want to make sure that you're definitely not using something like an olive oil because olive oil is best for a lower temperature. This is why when you're putting it on salads, dressings, when you, you can put it over your food at the end, you're getting some really good fats when you're doing that, which is good for your brain. But the other two, the coconut and the avocado oil are good for high temperatures. So when you're cooking with those, it doesn't change the molecular structure of the oil and therefore it becomes better for you to eat. Beef tallow is becoming something even more popular these days in order to cook with. And therefore that is something if you can get your hands on, that is allowed as well. If you can make your own bone broth, this is excellent for your body. Not only is it good for your entire body, it produces or helps your body produce more collagen and it's got even proteins in there, but also what's really nice is that it's gut healing. And this is what we're gonna be talking about next. How are we gonna create gut healing? Because this is where this is gonna happen. And realistically, I know that a lot of people are thinking, my brain's up here, my gut's down there. 
but the association between your gut and your brain is massive. And in fact, these days, with all the science and all the technology we have, we understand this area way more than we've ever had before. And the association between your gut and your brain is undeniable. This needs to be an area you need to prioritize when it comes to healing from concussion or really any other pro-inflammatory type of condition. What should you be drinking? Well, water is gonna be your best friend in this case, but if you need to add lemon to it, you can do that. It's also really good for your body. It'll add a little bit more of the electrolytes that you're looking for, so this is excellent for you. If you're really drinking sodas and Coke and things like that, then really you wanna stay away from that because not only is that sugar, but then there's a bunch of other things in there that really does your body no good. So what are the foods that you wanna stay away from? Well, the top foods that you need to stay away from is gonna be grains. You wanna stay away from grains, and with that, you can put nuts and seeds. Now, the reason why you're really staying away from them isn't because you know, we've grown up on this stuff and, and you know, I've always been okay with it. The problem with this is that it contains gluten and or something called lectins. Now, lectins is a form of gluten, it's a protein. And really, the way you have to look at this is this is sticky stuff right? That's the stuff that sticks. It sticks to cells and it actually blocks them from getting nutrition. So if you're trying to heal, if you're trying to get better and you're taking in grains, you're taking in seeds, well, what happens is your body actually gets blocked by these chemicals, by this lectin, by the gluten inside of the food. And therefore you're not absorbing nutrients and it's creating a pro-inflammatory state. So this is why you know, you have the symptoms, you're not feeling well, you need to prioritize all the other foods and then this stuff, this stuff can wait. Especially right now when you're trying to get better. Coffee is kind of like a middle ground here. If you're having 10 cups of coffee, you probably need to chill. But if you're having one or two, really it's not a problem, as much of a problem I should say. Caffeine is kind of like, again, it's in the middle here. So it is a stimulant and we are trying to get away from that. We're trying to get away from it. So if you can abstain from coffee, absolutely, I would say that. The other thing that's really interesting with caffeine is that it takes or it blocks or it leaches, it really actually takes it out, is magnesium. It actually removes that from your body. And it is definitely one of the supplements you should be taking. I've talked about that in the last video. So if you're taking these supplements, you're doing all this stuff, not only can the lectins be blocking things, your body now cannot absorb the nutrients and it becomes pro-inflammatory. But then you're taking like your cups of coffee and then all of a sudden you're realizing I'm doing all this nutrition and I'm not getting anywhere. Well, you're literally sabotaging your body. So if you have one or two, not a big deal, but if you're gonna go for 10 cups of coffee, you really need to relax. The other one that I really want you to be mindful of is there are certain fruits and we're talking fruits with high sugars. So it'd be like something like watermelon mangoes, pineapple, raisins, grapes, and canned fruits, especially the ones that are in the syrup. You wanna stay away from this because we're talking about sugar. You shouldn't be really eating that much sugar. So because sugar, again, not good for your body, it causes a pro-inflammatory state. It really gets in the way of so much. So the reality is, is if you're eating sugar in the form of fruits and you're thinking, oh, fruit's good for me, right? It's at least natural. They might be organic, but the problem here is that the fruit itself is high in sugar. And even though it is a fructose, it is a better form of sugar, regardless, it raises your insulin levels and that can cause a pro-inflammatory state. So we wanna stay away from those. Stick to berries. Berries, like I said before, are excellent. And then the last one I'm gonna say, I want you to kind of stay away from or be weary of are mushrooms. Now mushrooms and the brain are excellent and in fact, there's a lion's mane, there's a lot of these great mushrooms that actually help cognitive and things like that. However, mushrooms are a stimulant. So in certain cases, depending on where the bruising is, where you've had this injury or how long you've had this, sometimes it makes sense to actually stay away from mushrooms for a little while and then you can reintroduce them as your symptoms start to go away. So what is the best type of diet that somebody should be on? Because this can become a little bit too much. The best type of diet, and especially for anybody who just wants to regain their health. You don't have to have concussion to do this. Anybody that really wants to transform their body, get their body back to regenerating and healing and removing all the junk. Well, paleo diet, in my opinion, is the best type of diet. There are other types of diets out there, but however, the difference between 
paleo and maybe some of the other ones is I just look at sustainability. If I walk into a restaurant, if I go to a party, if I'm at somebody's house and they're feeding me foods, I have way more choice on the paleo diet than I have with the other ones. I've tried a lot of the other ones. I love keto diet. I absolutely believe in the keto diet. However, it is not that sustainable for me. I find that is really tough. I have two young kids. And so if we're going out to places and there's parties and stuff, do you know how hard that would be to be on that diet? I find that extremely restricting. And then I don't love my life as much. So I want you to love your life. And I want you to do things that are easy for you. And the other one that a lot of people talk about, especially now, are gonna be like your all meat diet. So the carnivore diet, which again, I absolutely love. There's a lot of great authors out there right now. They're showing a lot of good research around this. So going to that meat heavy, and I agree, I understand what we're trying to do. However, again, sustainability. I find it extremely difficult. If that is you, you're okay with it, go nuts. But paleo diet is one of those things where we're following all these basic rules here. We're staying away from the wheats, we're staying away from the grains, sorry, and the nuts and seeds. We're doing way more meats, we're doing vegetables, but then we're not gonna be introducing things like legumes. We're gonna get legumes out of our diet. The, the number one thing that's gonna be frustrating for people watching this video is gonna be like, this guy's crazy because I love legumes, there's a lot of nutrition in those. And we're not talking about nutrition right now. We're not talking about how much vitamins this has or this doesn't or whatever. That's not what we're talking about. I'm purely looking at it from an inflammatory gut reaction. And so when you're looking at these foods, these are the ones that are causing the most gut irritating issues. These are the ones blocking your body's ability to heal. And therefore, getting them out of your diet, getting a clean diet like the paleo diet will not only help you heal and get better as soon as possible, but really it's sustainable. It's something you can do as much as you want. And you're gonna notice you can walk into a restaurant, you can go to a party, you can do all these things and you're not severely restricted. At the bottom of the video, within the notes, I'm gonna put links to certain paleo diets and, th and resources that you can have. I'm also gonna put a table as far as the food that you should eat and you shouldn't eat. So I'm gonna have a really good breakdown of this. If you have a question about this video, you wanna know more about this information, you can leave it down in the comments below. I'm also gonna put a link to a video that I made last time right here. Go ahead and watch that because that's gonna go through some of the background information about concussion, but also my top three supplements that you should be taking if you have concussion.